Tim from BBI, infomercial, episode three. <laughs> Somebody asked what filaments do we use? The filaments that are in the plastic 3D printing, they range. There's hundreds and hundreds of different filaments. And, and typically you're gonna wanna look at, is it just for fit? Because then if we're doing something that just for fit and doesn't need to be strong, uh, but you, you can still bolt it on. This was actually from the piggy intake where the two injectors ran, but we need to make sure we can clear everything. And so we print this out of some really cheap filament. And then when you really want to do something that you can need to bolt dampers to, there's other filaments that you can run. Like this is our knuckle, you know, we 3D printed this and actually bolted this to Chris's car, put a whole wheel assembly on it and ran it through its course. And then you can use stuff that can withstand vibration, heat, structural loads. This 3D printed intake manifold uh, was an SLS deal. And what ended up happening here is we ran this on the dyno and there's a lot of vibrations. You can't run it for very long, but it gives you an idea of what you got going on. It's not a final use product. But then there are 3D filaments that you can do final use on like interior pieces, handles, grabs, clips. The technology and the filament side are really, really starting to cruise along and make it so there's a solution for almost every application. Then you go to the metal side. So this is aluminum. This is essentially that piece, but then we added injector bungs so we can have a secondary injectors on a turbo car. There's like three or four different types of 3D printers. Some, like you can just imagine, they're like a hot melt glue gun on a gantry that, that prints your part on a moving bed. And then there's others that are like, you have a vat of resin and then the lasers go in and that prints the part out and it almost pulls out. And then you have the metal side of things. Back in the day, they used to have like a sintering process where metals printed out like kind of like the traditional plastic ones. The metal was it with a binder, like a wax style binder, and you'd actually print it larger than it is. And then you take that end piece that's printed with metal filament, you would, I guess you could call it, and you put it in a kiln like you, like you would do some pottery and it would burn out all of the binding agents and the whole part would shrink down to what you actually designed it to be. Then you have um, DMLS where it's a uh, direct metal, laser sintering. The sintering part is actually a German word for melt, but we can use sintering, so it's still the same thing. And that's like a bed that moves down and you have lasers that burn a really, really, really fine powdered metal. And you can mix some alloys like crazy. You, know, you have titaniums and canals, scamaloids, aluminums, and then it gets even further than that. Um, but when you're utilizing that style, and that's what this is, as you're burning it down, the bed, like you first start at your layer and then it burns it down a little bit and then down and down and the bed moves and then a new layer of, of uh, powder is on top of it. The powder can be so fine that you shouldn't even touch it. It can absorb into your pores. Like I said, I know just the tip of the iceberg about all of this stuff and the technology is, is, is wild. Thanks for watching. Hit us with your questions, your comments or whatever. What are we doing next? <laughs>